Welcome back to Mamma Mia on Sky News. Now, recently Sam sat down to talk about porn. We've talked about politics and now we're going to talk about porn. He sat down with Bettina Arndt, who is a sex therapist and author of books like The Sex Diaries and What, when, what Men Want, and Melinda tankard Reist, who's written her own book called Big Porn Inc. She's an anti-porn crusader and a social commentator. Here's what they both had to say. What do you consider pornography? Well, pornography is really uh, depicting women primarily in um, subordinated ways. It is really valuing a woman for what she can offer, what she can provide um, sexually. What we wanted to do with this book was to unpack and explore the true nature of the global porn industry worth 100 billion US and perhaps try to deconstruct some of the myths around porn and the pornography industry. That it's harmless, that it's fun, that it's about freedom and liberation, that it's cool, that it's some kind of modern fashion chic. Mm -hmm. We wanted to explore the true nature and look at the fact that it's often about violence, sadism, torture of women, how mm -hmm. much a woman can take. What do you define as porn? Like, would you say that the now defunct Ralph magazine or Playboy mm. magazine, mm. is that pornography? Is that demeaning to women? Well, I would describe Ralph as like porn training wheels mm. for boys. Mm. So obviously there's a, a continuum, mm. uh, but it often starts there. It often starts with the lads mags, mm. training wheels for boys, an introduction to pornography. Mm. The aim is still to represent women as ready and available for sexual gratification. Mm. It, it's still masturbatory material. Mm. It's still the idea is still to get a man off. Mm. Uh, that, that's the, the aim, to present a woman as essentially a sexual service station, mm. as available for male gratification and pleasure. On the flip side of this, there's also a very much objectification of men. In yes. that men, in most porn pornographic films, in most pornographic images, are reduced mm. to cock alone. Correct. That's all you see. Correct. Does it concern you that men are also...? Absolutely, it does. I'm really concerned with how pornography is shaping and moulding and conditioning the emerging sexuality of boys. Mm. Often the first exposure to porn is really extreme, hardcore, violent pornography, often mm. before they've even had sex. So they mm. come to think that stuff is normal. I wrote an article in 2006 where I made the, 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 the statement that internet <laughs> porn will have as profound effect on male-female relationships as mm. the pill did. What it's doing to relationships, like we believe this is a public health hazard of major proportions that hasn't been properly acknowledged as such. At the moment, it's a free-for-all. The porn industry can do whatever it wants and gets away, get away with it. Mm. I think there needs to be something done about mandatory filtering at source. I think the government should revisit that mm. and not be um, bowed, you know, not bowed down to the vested interests of the global porn industry, mm. which wants business as usual. Mm. Do, you, um, do you think the porn should be illegal? We are saying that, are you? <laughs> do I think yeah. porn should be illegal? Certainly some forms of it, absol absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. Um, but the few laws that do exist are completely flouted. Mm. They're completely ignored. Basically, it's a big, you know, F you to, to everyone from the porn industry, which knows they can violate whatever pathetic regulations already like apply and get away with it. One of the classic areas where men are kept out of the discussion publicly is the whole issue of pornography, where we've had this passing parade of women coming along and raving about porn and how destructive porn is and how men, porn is turning men into violent, misogynist creatures. Um, and we ha men never dare say boo, they never dare talk about it. Uh, and yet I've just been involved in research in the last few years getting men to write about a whole lot of issues to do with their sexuality, including pornography, and asking men why they do it and do they find they get a, you know, a sort of compulsive thing or not or can they keep it under control and what is it that it offers men. And you get, hear something so different when you actually go out and talk to men themselves about why they use it. Mm. And mm. a lot of it is about the fact that men struggle to deal with their strong sex drives. Mm. And they, you know, they don't want to impose themselves on women. And, and they, you know, they are constantly having sex doled out to them like meaty bites to a dog, is what mm. we had said the other day. Oh. And how they cope, how they keep a lid on all of that is using porn.
they've yeah. always masturbated, yeah. and now they've got this. You know, there's always been pornography. There's always. I think there are a lot of young guys out there whose first interactions with 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 female with females and with with sex is in internet <coughs> porn. And there are issues that worry me in porn. But some of it is wonderful. I mean, when I was starting off working as a sex therapist back in the 19... I agree. <laughs> no, but back in the 1970s, I used to smuggle... I had these little slides of penises and, and female <laughs> genitals, and I'd smuggle them into the country to, do, when I, to use for when I'm giving education talks because no-one got an opportunity to look at what other bodies looked like. Mm. And everybody grew up wondering, you know, people used to peer at the Playboys trying to <laughs> see what they, if they could see anything. Mm. Um, and, of course, no one ever got a chance to look at what normal bodies were like. And now it's all there. And a lot of that is really good. Mm. Men are learning. I mean, some of it's unrealistic. Some of it's not, you know, crazy sex. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff there. Men are learning about things like oral sex and realising you know, that this is a good way of pleasing women, whoopee. Mm. I mean, I think that's fantastic mm. that they're learning about that that should be a reciprocal activity and that many, many women enjoy it too. And uh, so the whole sort of sexual repertoire is changing and, and mainly in a positive way, I think. I think it's a nonsense to suggest that men are turning into these ghastly violent creatures. And it is interesting, the whole porn debate, because at one, e one end of the spectrum you've got people saying that it's forcing women into this almost unachievable aesthetic of, you know, tiny bums, tiny waist, big tits. Yeah, but, but do, you know, do you know what the big growth in porn is? Is the do-it-yourself oh, stuff, yeah, yeah. you know, where people just set up webcams. And, oh, yeah. and that's what a lot of my guys really like, seeing mm. ordinary women. Mm. You know, the pink dressing gown is hanging, hanging on the doorknob. Mm. It's sort of... Still got the, the, still the, got the socks on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what they find so fascinating. Mm. Um, and that's not about, you know, airbrushed plastic women. That's about normal women. Mm. And that's where the big growth is, which I think is fantastic. The diversity is incredible. So people who do argue that we're, we're pushing women into one aesthetic, I don't know where no, they've been look, on the part, internet lately. But part of the reaction from women, of course, is that, oh, there he was looking at these women with the big, big, big tits and I've got small tits, therefore he can't like me. Mm. It's about fantasy. It's about... I mean, most men say that it's about looking at willy women, women who are really into sex, mm. looking at what they don't get at home. Mm. You know, just as women's fantasy material is... I mean, I suppose all the, the chick lit is mm. about, you know, men who... who, who, who Sweep, sweep women off their feet and behave in a most unrealistic way too. Mm. If this is not about real life. In fact, it's an escape from real life because real life sex is hard work for me. Well, oh, golly. I agree with them, but I found myself yeah. nodding at parts of what both of them had to say. Sam, I want to go to you first. How did you feel about it after speaking to two women with very different opinions? Can I just say, mm. Mm. mm.